summer reset for the Trump administration. Joining me now is Fox News politics editor Chris Starwalt. Chris, I always I, my expectations are always big for you, so sorry uh -oh. I, I'm teeing it up to you. Uh, good to see you <laughs> so early in the morning, though. Good morning. All right, so Chris, the president appointed General John Kelly as the new White House chief of staff. Will we see a more focused White House when the president and Congress return to Washington? Well, look, the, what the chief of staff can do is manage up to a certain degree, uh, that is, that he can try to apply strictures to his boss. Uh, and there are lots, you talk about high expectations, there's a ton of pressure on Kelly uh, to make Trump be a different kind of president. But that's really not the way that that's going to work. Uh, he, he's a will and pleasure employee who can, uh, the only real control he has over Trump is threatening to create more chaos by saying, I'll walk if you don't meet certain requirements. What Kelly can do, and what he has been empowered to do is control these, this, this uh, gang warfare that has been raging through the West Wing, unlike anything I've ever seen where you have these factions between basically uh, the traditional conservative Republicans, the sort of Team Pence, normal Republicans, uh, then you have the, whether you want to call them alt-right or whether you want to call them uh, nationalist populists or whatever, uh, Team Bannon, and then you've got this whole other group, which are uh, Jared and Ivanka, uh, and you have these people who are Democrats or non-Republicans or whatever you want to call them, and the, these factions have been terrible and ripping each other apart and mm -hmm. leaking and harming. Kelly's number one job is stop that fratricide. Yeah. And you get this, you get the sense that he's 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 moving in with force, uh, Chris. Th this this is all happening as the president crosses the 200-day mark. Hard to believe as commander in chief in the Dow, as we keep noting, is reaching record high after record high, nine days straight for the Dow. Uh, Eric Trump says his father's focus on the economy is uh, this is the result of that. Watch this. Look at what he's done, though. I mean, look at where the markets are, right? I mean, the U.S. economy has gained $4 trillion. $4 trillion. Million new jobs. In the first Lowest number of people on food stamps in seven years. Keystone Pipeline, right? I mean, highest consumer confidence in, in generations. Highest small business confidence in, in generations. I'll, I'll, I'll let John Hilsenrath in a second tell us whether or not the Trump administration can take all the credit for that rise in the stock market and the stronger economy. But, Chris, do middle class Americans feel that this president is fighting for them? Well, we are an investor nation now in a way that we were. Every year there are more American investors. The end of defined benefit uh, pension plans and all of that. Uh, we are an investor nation. There's no question about it. But they should be very cautious. They have been talking up stock markets. And not that there's anything wrong with being obsessed with markets, guys. I, th I think this is perfectly great. Uh, but for most Americans, what matters is take home pay. What matters is are real household incomes going up? And so far, income growth, which we might expect to see as we see the labor market uh, reaching its boundaries, that we might expect to see wages go up. But it's increased wages that matter to people, not saying Wall Street is killing it. Mm. Well, you know, I, I would say the economy is doing pretty well right now. Uh, we're, we're creating about 184,000 jobs a month this year. We we're creating about 182,000 jobs a month last year. So it's on a steady it's on a steady footing. I think what's going on is that the global economy is doing well. For the first time in this expansion we have the the global economy hitting on all cylinders. Europe is finally coming back. Asia has settled down. So, you know, the president gets some credit maybe for the confidence that that's out there, but it's really earnings. It's the private sector. It's the private economy that's driving the market higher. I well, think, and I, not it, the noise that's happening in Washington. We're skipping over something that is so pivotal and key to why the market's done well, and it's the dollar is down 7% this year. If the, if the economy's been doing so well, why are we down 7% on a dollar basis? And that's not good for and U.S. middle-income people. The dollar is down it's because not, Europe is coming exactly. back. Exactly. And, 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 and the European Central Bank is, is, is looking to end its, uh, its QE program. What that means, the dollar is down because the rest of the world is doing better, and that's good Exactly. For this America. administration can't take credit for a market where the dollar has been coming down when people, everybody here wants a stronger dollar. It benefits all of us You'd be surprised what a presidential and, administration will take credit for. Uh, <laughs> they take, uh, they take credit for all of it. Yes, that's a fair point. Put it. You know, Chris, something else that caught my eye, um, talking about the president and the media, uh, President Trump, um, breaking 64 years of precedent 
Uh, we, we went through the numbers on this, holding just one solo press conference in his yep. first 200 days in office. And in comparison, you'll see President Obama at this point had held eight solo conferences. Um, and obviously, you can see George uh, W. Bush, three, uh, Clinton H., George H. W. Bush, 18. So uh, just one in his first 200 days. What do you make of that, Chris Steyerwalt? Well, he hates the press, um, and the press probably hates him. Um, uh, the, the, the other thing here is, at a certain point in every presidency, whether it's for a period of time or whether it's sort of at the end, you, a decision is made by the president and his advisors that they're not going to get the middle back. That you're not, whether it's you're going to govern from the left and you're going to quit trying to get swing voters in the middle, or you're going to govern from the right and you're going to quit trying to get these swing voters. The decision, and a press conference is a way to reach out to new voters. It's a way to explain yourself, to talk to people, to get a broader audience. This administration is going the other way, and they're going for their own Facebook TV channel. They're talking to themselves and keeping that 30 percent, 35 percent of the electorate that's behind the president engaged, and they're going to try to use that as a battering ram to frighten Republicans about primary challenges to cram through something at the end on party line votes in hopes that they can enter 2018 on some kind of footing. Caitlin yeah. Dewey Burns has a question. Yeah, I was going to say, Chris, that's a really interesting thing to me because we've seen that the president has not been able yet to kind of instill fear in these Republican lawmakers. I mean, what does it take for them to feel some kind of pressure. I mean, probably from constituents heading into their own reelections, but a lot of them have shown, you know, defiance against this president, have shown that they're not really that worried about primary challenges. Well, they are, as you know full well, uh, they are worried, and they are living in sort of this uh, Dante's Inferno of they cannot find legislation that they can pass that will satisfy their base. And they're ping-ponging around in this space, and they can't figure it out because there isn't anything that will satisfy their base and be able to get 51 votes on reconciliation, or certainly 60 votes with Democrats, so they just don't know what to do. I imagine that what happens in the end is that they're going to come back and they are going to do the mamma jamma all-time greatest sloppy budget <laughs> reconciliation oh, yeah. grosso midnight everything and the kitchen sink thrown in it and they'll pass it on a voice vote in the house and everybody will just run away and hide for two weeks hey can, you know can, can we put that when we write that in the wall street journal on the front page can we use your term mamma jamma <laughs> mamma jamma is, yeah. is absolutely welcome to if i could ever if i could program. ever read that Congress in the wall street journal it would make my life did budget yes absolutely <laughs> i think that's accessible <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris Starwell, thank you for coming on with us this morning. You bet. You guys have a great day. All right, you too.